Hello and welcome to the Plano Chamber Annual Meeting and State of the City Address. My name is Kelly Marcellus, President and CEO of the Plano Chamber of Commerce. As the voice of business, the Plano Chamber's fundamental purpose is to create and sustain a competitive advantage for the businesses in our region, as well as maintain and grow Plano's reputation as an innovative leader and the best place to live, work, and do business in the state of Texas. As one of the most influential business organizations in the Plano region, we are uniquely positioned to help our members and businesses across the city reach goals, impact our community, and build a sustainable and prosperous future for all people. On behalf of the staff and almost 1,000 members, we are excited to once again partner with the City of Plano and bring Mayor John Munn's first State of the City straight to your screen. I would like to thank Toyota Motor North America for sponsoring today's event, and I look forward to hearing from Chris Reynolds, Chief Administrative Officer for Toyota, just a little later in our broadcast. Toyota is an incredible employer, leader, and partner in Plano, and we are lucky to have them join us today. Now, I'd like to introduce the 2021 Plano Chamber Board Chair, Steve McSwain, with Arta Travel. Over the past 12 months, it has been my distinct honor to work with Steve as he led our board and members through the second consecutive year of great change in the way we work and do business. With his final message as chair, Please welcome Steve McSwain. It's been an honor to serve as your 2021 board chair, and I'm thankful for the opportunity to work alongside such impactful and resilient group of leaders, representing businesses of all sizes in our community. This time last year, I shared with you our vision for 2021, which included the development of a new strategic plan, and we are proud that not only have we completed this goal, but as a result, it's a well-developed, forward-thinking, and impactful roadmap for the future. This two-year plan is a blueprint for bold and visionary leadership the Plano Chamber brings to the region. Together, we drive job creation, foster entrepreneurship, small business growth, improve community competitiveness, and maximize community impact. We will continue to move these priorities forward by delivering exceptional value to our members, advancing and elevating the Plano region, and leveraging organizational success and long-term sustainability. Our plan came together around words like advocacy, engagement, leadership, growth, inclusion, partnerships, and storytelling. I'm proud of the work that this chamber has done over the past year to create impactful goals for our community, and I'm thrilled to continue to serve as we work on those critical needs in our community. You will hear more about some of our specific plans from the 2022 Chair of the Board in just a few moments. I also told you a year ago that we're starting the process of establishing a foundation, and I'm excited to use this platform as an opportunity to introduce the Plano Works Leadership Foundation. For more information about the foundation, here is Plano Chamber Board Member Joan Satira. The purpose of the newly created Plano Works Leadership Foundation is to educate and inspire people who want to make a difference as community leaders. The Plano Chamber has been helping build strong leaders for more than 75 years. That proven history will help propel the foundation to really build and celebrate a diverse community of civic leaders with the skills and experience to enact meaningful change together. Proven programs like Leadership Plano, the Plano Culture and Inclusion Alliance, and our Young Professionals Plano will plant the seed that will grow to incorporate new programs like Plano United Business that is designed to build a strong workforce and a thriving community. The foundation will broaden the Plano Chamber's access to resources so we can build these programs into true community catalysts. I'm proud to serve on the board of Plano Works Leadership Foundation, and I invite all employers in Plano to support these initiatives. Let's work together. As the voice of the business community, the Chamber connects member companies with elected officials at all levels to advocate for pro-business policies that ensure we continue to build prosperity maintain a high quality of life. Much of 2021 was dedicated to protecting our region's business advantages through the 87th Texas State Legislative Session. This was truly a session like no other, with reduced capacity at the Capitol and hosting visits with our state delegation virtually, we worked diligently to bring the legislative process home to our members who couldn't travel to Austin due to those restrictions. In January, we hosted a conversation with former Speaker of the Texas House, Joe Strauss, and former State Senator Florence Shapiro to kick off the legislative session. 
We also hosted both Plano Legislative Days and Collin County Days virtually with access to our entire Collin County delegation along with Governor Greg Abbott and Comptroller Glenn Hager and Senator Nathan Johnson. The Chamber also had a large focus on our local elections and the impact statewide of redistricting. In the local election, we led efforts to engage with thousands of newly registered voters through a direct mail campaign and to provide access to candidate information through our partnership with Collin County Votes. Five city council seats, including mayor, were decided along with four Plano ISD trustee races and three Collin College trustee races. Redistricting had a major impact on our community as well. The chamber welcomed Ross Ramsey, editor of the Texas Tribune, for a look at the process and impact of redrawing Texas districts after explosive growth in our community. Three local mayors, including our own Mayor Munns, joined that conversation to help our members understand the importance and impact redistricting can make. Many in our community are still learning of the change in their representation and the Plano Chamber is already working within those newly formed districts to prepare for elections this spring. Companies of all sizes came together in 2021 to take advantage of the five-star programming we produced. Just a few of those include the resumption of our signature leadership program. Leadership Plano, which kicked off class 38 and just may be the best class ever, the 30th annual golf tournament and Plano First Executive Breakfast Series resumed. We stayed nimble and developed timely content to bring you topics including supply chain challenges, workplace bias, and legislation affecting businesses as we continue to feel the impacts of COVID-19. We saw a resurgence in our Plano Chamber Business Center, the relaunch of our Friday morning networking and business after hours programs, and we were grateful to welcome two summer interns from the Plano Mayor's Summer Intern Program. Together with the City of Plano and Plano ISD, two of our most valued partners, we hosted the Plano Family's first job fair and new teacher bag program, providing resume assistance, headshots, and job opportunities to over 500 residents, as well as welcomed over 600 new teachers to our district. It's been a busy, challenging, and extremely rewarding year, and none of this would have been possible without the hard work from our Plano Chamber board members, who volunteer their time and efforts to keep business in Plano moving forward. I would like to take a moment to thank our 2021 board members whose service on the board has ended, but who are still an important part of the work we continue to do as members. Lisa Smith with FedEx Office, who served as our chair of the board in 2020. Ashley Simpson with Ewing Automotive Group, who served several years as our program chair. Donna Bender, representing the Donna Bender Company, who wrapped up two terms as chair of the women's division and Bob Kerr with Care Technologies, who will wrap up his term as Leadership Plano Chair in June. While we're always sad to see our fellow leaders retire from these roles, we're inspired and energized by the wonderful new board members who will begin their service to the Chamber this year. One of my roles as board chair was to act as mentor to our chair-elect and to prepare them for the year ahead. I'm very excited to officially pass the gavel on, and I know our 2022 chair is going to leave a lasting impact on the organization. Please welcome Emily Zug with Veritex Community Bank, your 2022 Plano Chamber Chair of the Board. Thank you, Steve. It has been such an honor to work with you and support you and the entire membership as we accomplished so much in 2021. I want to thank you for your outstanding leadership in 2021, definitely a year like no other. We experienced pandemic fatigue, the introduction of vaccines and additional testing, two powerful COVID variants and multiple shifts from in-person to virtual and back. And your leadership is why we rose to the challenge and continued to grow. On behalf of the board, chamber members and staff, we thank you for your time, dedication and your humor while serving as 2021 board chair. There's a lot to look forward to in 2022. I am delighted to serve as your new Plano Chamber Chair of the Board. Thanks to a strong strategic plan and world-class leadership, the expectations for 2022 are high and we are ready for the challenge, as well as excited and encouraged by the support from our community. We will strengthen our member engagement with the development of the new small business program, which puts an emphasis on sharing resources and building stronger growth opportunities. We will welcome more businesses back to our in-person events this year, and we have some fun new opportunities planned as well. We just heard Steve discuss the many ways the Plano Chamber advocated for pro-business policies and voter turnout in 2021. We won't be slowing down this year. The Chamber will be doubling down on voter turnout and voter education programs throughout the statewide elections in both March and November. 
Candidate and issue forums will deepen member awareness of policy issues and candidates for offices across the state. We will build relationships with elected officials and staff as we learn more about the redrawn district lines and those newly elected to office. And we will focus on our future, the introduction of a Young Professionals Candidate School later this year. Three brand new tools will also help the Chamber promote a positive business climate for sustainability and recovery. Ballot Ready, which is already embedded in the Chamber's website, increases awareness around elections and candidates, providing information on voting locations and procedures, and will ensure voters understand their new districts and positions on their ballots. Quorum Grassroots is a platform that creates easy access for Chamber members to text, place phone calls, or send emails to policymakers on the local, state, and federal levels. This tool will increase transparency and accountability in the policy making process. And finally, Quorum Legislative Tracking will systematically track and monitor our legislative relationships through consistent reports of legislative activity, real-time updates progress of all bills and personalized comments to how the bill relates to the Chamber's legislative priorities and impacts your business. The Plano Chamber is celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Women's Division this year. The Women's Division will always hold a special place in my heart. I got my start in Chamber leadership serving on the Women's Division Board and I am thrilled to celebrate the 50 years of women who came before me and the legacy we will continue to build for women far into the future. I am not the only one excited for the special Women's Division milestone. Let's hear from the 2022 Women's Division Board President, Dr. Cheryl Action Jackson. Thank you, Emily. The Women's Division, started in 1972, has served this Plano community for 50 years. And while the focus has changed, over the years, the hard work and commitment has stayed the same, evolving from launching the Plano Balloon Festival and working to produce Fourth of July fireworks shows, the Women's Division now works to empower women in business to harness their full potential. As the first African-American Women's Division president, I am proud to serve our theme for 2022, working better together. We have a truly amazing year of opportunities planned and could not be more excited to see all that we accomplish by working better together. I'm looking forward to a wonderful year from our women's division. Another program I want to highlight today is the newly developed Plano United Business or PUB program. PUB is truly groundbreaking and will serve as a model for collaborative partnerships for years to come. Minority and women-owned small businesses will have the opportunity to earn a scholarship providing access to chamber membership for two years, business coaching and mentorship, specially designed educational forums, and community involvement. For a little more on the Plano United Business Program, here is Tyra Sanders with Regions Bank, our presenting sponsor for the program. The Plano United Business Program, which we refer to as PUB, is the ultimate example of moving words into action. PUB is the opportunity for minority and women-owned small businesses to grow through chamber membership, education, mentorship, and relationship building. This program is important to me and Regions Bank because we believe leading with equity is about recognizing that different people and different companies have different needs. We are committed to giving people what they need to succeed. We're excited to partner with the Plano Chamber and the Collin County Small Business Development Center to launch the first pub cohort in 2022. Plano United Business changes the conversation for small businesses who may not have access to the fellowship and opportunities available through traditional channels. It works to create a network that goes deeper than identity and crosses boundaries. It is the fuel small businesses need to succeed in this economy. The Plano Chamber, the Collin County Small Business Development Center, and Regions Bank all put people first. The opportunities to grow are endless, and we are ready to put in the work, but I won't be doing it alone. In addition to our board members who continue their term from 2021, I am thrilled to welcome seven new business leaders from across the Plano region. Please join me in welcoming Sean Corrington with Furniture Marketing Group, Emily Fulton with AT&T, 
Cheryl Jackson as the chair of the women's division with Minnie's Food Pantry, Lucas Lachance with Lane Gorman Trubit LLC, Chad Mumford with Liberty Mutual, Jyrick Sims with Medical City Plano, and Brian Lyons with Plano ISD who will take over the leadership Plano chair position in June. With great volunteer leadership from the Board of Directors, hard work from the Plano Chamber staff, and the support of our business community, there's nothing we cannot accomplish. Whether you're a small business, learning how your products and services fit into the larger ecosystem, or a community champion, leading the business community and giving back and making the Plano region a better place to live, work and do business, the Plano Chamber is uniquely positioned to help our members reach their goals and maintain the high quality of life for all of our residents, employees, and customers. Thank you for your time today and your support of the Plano business community. Thank you, Emily. I am excited to get to work with you and the entire board in 2022. Education has and always will be a priority for our community. Our public school system is our greatest asset and is key to our future workforce and the success of our local businesses, large and small. In 2021, Plano ISD was met with challenge and opportunity as we saw firsthand how much hard work and sacrifice our leaders in education are willing to put in to keeping our children educated and safe. We thank them for their extraordinary efforts. Now, let's take a moment to hear an update from Plano ISD. Bethany Elementary, Teacher of the Year at Hunt Elementary, Teacher of the Year at Robinson Middle School, Teacher of the Year at Gorman Elementary, Teacher of the Year at Auto Middle School, Teacher of the Year at Hedgecoats Elementary.
As we now turn our focus to our partners at the City of Plano, I want to take a moment again to thank our sponsor, Toyota Motor North America, for their partnership in bringing this program to you. To introduce Mayor John Munns, I would like to welcome Chris Reynolds, Chief Administrative Officer at Toyota. Good morning. It's a pleasure to join you today. My name is Chris Reynolds, and I'm the Chief Administrative Officer for Toyota Motor North America. This is Toyota's third year as the presenting sponsor of the Plano Chamber's annual meeting and State of the City. Now you know this event is important to Toyota as we view our engagement as an integral part of our partnership with the city, chamber, education entities, and the community Toyota calls home. Now needless to say, the past few years have been very challenging for all of us but with each passing day, Toyota is more thankful to be a part of Plano, the city of excellence. From the mayor and city council to the city manager, each of you have been a key partner in our success. And on behalf of Toyota, I want to thank you for your support for our business and especially your support for our team members. As we look ahead, we know there's much to be optimistic about. At Toyota, we're focusing our efforts to provide mobility for all, whether you're going across the country, across town, or even across your living room. Well, we want to provide freedom of movement for everyone. And while we're working toward this goal, we're also working to achieve carbon neutrality with our vehicles and operations just as quickly as possible. So stay tuned, because you're going to see a lot of great things from Toyota. Now, speaking of great things, Let's talk about a man who we know will continue to do great things for our city, the 40th mayor of Plano, John Munns. John was elected mayor of Plano in May of 2021 during what we can all agree was an unprecedented time. But since he comes from a family with deep, deep roots in Plano, a family who've been dedicated to building a legacy of service, Mayor Munns wanted to do his part. He followed in his father's footsteps who served as mayor in the 1990s. But this is not his first time giving back to the community. John served Plano in many capacities, from chair of the city's planning and zoning commission to the economic development board and 16 years on the school board. John understands the intersection of business, education, and meeting the needs of all Plano residents. Mayor, thank you so much for leading our community and it's a pleasure for all of us to hear your very first State of the City Address today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mayor John Munns. Welcome to Plano's State of the City Address. I'm Mayor John Munns. I'm Mayor Pro Tem Casey Prince. I'm Deputy Mayor Pro Tem Maria Tu. I'm Council Member Anthony Riccadelli. I'm Council Member Rick Grady. I'm Council Member Shelby Williams. I'm Council Member Julie Holmer. And I'm Council Member Rick Smith. 2021 was a year to be proud of in our city of excellence. This past year, we were named one of the top 20 best places to live in the U.S. and top best place to live in Texas. We were also recognized as the third safest city in America. Not only is Plano the fifth most affordable city in America for early retirees, it's also the seventh best U.S. city to buy an affordable family home. We're proud Plano received the top award for leading the way for service delivery and customer satisfaction. Plano was ranked seventh for percentage of college graduates in Texas. Plano was also named the best city for people with disabilities in Texas and the 21st best city for people with disabilities in America. Finally, Plano not only ranks among the top bike-friendly cities in America, but we're also a top 50 healthiest U.S. city. It's for all of these reasons and many more that we call ourselves the city of excellence. Our accolades speak for themselves. We truly live in one of the greatest communities in America. Our reputation as the city of excellence is built upon the strong bonds of relationship we have as a community. Our partnerships are key to our successes. I'm so glad we're here today to celebrate our community of excellence. Part of celebrating involves reflecting on the past year's accomplishments and projects 
Of course, these don't happen without our excellent city staff. As city manager, it's an honor to lead Team Plano. Our organizational serve values make us who we are and guide us as we serve each of you in our city. As our organization evolves over time, the beliefs that are most important to us stay the same. Stewardship, engaged, respectful, visionary, and excellence. We take pride in what we do and how we do it, which is why I often say our people are our greatest asset. As we've gone through COVID and Winter Storm Uri, we've seen excellent performance by our staff. That's because for Plano, excellence isn't a final destination. When we know better, we do better. It's our pleasure to serve. It's no secret, we're a mature community. However, as they say with maturity comes wisdom. We know a significant part of our appeal is Plano's commitment to excellence. Your city is going to maintain the same high quality you have come to expect. That's part of the reason you've seen so many construction cones throughout the city. In this budget year, we have dedicated $286 million to infrastructure-related projects, along with another $14.9 million in ARPA funds. Here to share more about Plano's approach to maintaining our infrastructure is our new Director of Public Works, Dan Prendergast, and Director of Engineering, Caleb Thornhill. Well, Caleb, what a year it's been in pavement management, right? Yeah. We got together about a year ago and had to come up with a bond program. Uh, came up, uh, looked at our pavement management practices where we take data of the condition of our pavement uh, network and look at the proper maintenance treatment or replacement treatment for that roadway. Mm -hmm. We went from a $90 million bond program for streets to a $231 million bond program. Yeah, quite a jump. Yeah, and we shifted a lot of our, our dollars to maintenance to be able to extend the life of our pavement structures rather than replace it. Because mm -hmm. when you replace a street, a six lane divided arterial, you're looking at about 10 to $12 million a mile. Mm -hmm. When you repair and overlay a street, you're looking at about $2 million a mile. So while the, the, the brand new street may last 30 or 40 years, the repair and overlay lasts 20 years. Mm -hmm. It still makes more sense to do that. It's also a much less disruption. But we do have some projects coming up that you're going to replace streets on, right? Yeah, we've got uh, a couple large projects. Shiloh Road is the one on the east side of town. We're widening it from a two-lane to a four-lane project um, or roadway. That's the one we're collaborating with Parks and you guys as well. Uh, we've got uh, a big bridge that's going to be going in there. Uh, we've got hike and bike trail, we've got bike lanes, of course it's up near the, the dog park up there. So it's one of our larger projects. You mentioned the, um, the pavement condition, the Parker Road reconstruction from Custer to Round Rocks, another big one that we've got going on. I don't know, you know, you guys had evaluated that one, but that one was turned over to engineering and we typically will take that over when it's a full replacement mm -hmm. and we'll be doing that. Yeah, once a road gets down to a certain condition level, it, the only cost-effective method is to actually replace it, even though right. it's much more costly than doing the repair. Yeah, I know overlay. you guys did a, that small overlay on Parker Road. We did, yes. So. When we go through and, and just repair damaged concrete, we're not maintaining the entire street. Once that overlay goes down, we're doing full maintenance from point A to point B along that whole section. Well, and I think that's where it's critical because that extends the life of that pavement. And when the city's got pavement that's reaching its end of life, you know, this allows us to cover a lot more territory. You know, the other big project we have is over at Cullen Creek. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to be lining those uh, culverts. Uh, we've got just over a mile and a half of tunnels that we'll be lining, and uh, we've started that last summer, uh, summer of 21. We'll probably be done with it in the fall or the winter of 2022. That's a project that we worked a lot on together. Uh, yeah, because to eventually out. you guys will be taking over the maintenance of that. So that's one we, another one we have to collaborate. But uh, they're moving on it. Uh, you don't see a lot of work because all of it's underneath the, in the tunnels. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're excited to get these guys moving forward. And then we said make sure it lasts for 50 years. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The city is also focused on strategic redevelopment opportunities. After nearly two years of collaborative work, by residents and city staff, City Council unanimously adopted a new comprehensive plan. This plan will guide our community as we seek the best opportunities to revitalize aging properties, re-energize neighborhoods, and make wise decisions regarding our limited open space. The new plan is community-based. It was developed by a group of 24 citizens that met over a period of 20 months. It got unanimous support from three different bodies, the Comprehensive Plan Review Committee, 
the Planning and Zoning Commission and the City Council. So that was a major accomplishment. It's a data-driven plan. It's a transparent plan. It's available 24-7 online through being website-based. And uh, those are some significant differences um, in this plan from plans in the past. There are a couple of new elements that were specifically added to help citizens understand. The first element is the guiding principles, and these are overarching concepts that are meant to guide development. Plano today, Plano 2050, and Plano together. So there are some foundational principles that were added. Additionally, we added a glossary to help people better understand some of the technical terminology. We included an executive summary to help people that didn't want to read all the pages be able to easily understand what the plan was all about. Because it is so accessible online, developers have access not just when the planning department's open and when they can talk to a planner, but they can access information about their property anytime they want to through planocompplan.org. I believe it'll influence development by creating a growth management strategy that is both favorable to the development community and favorable to Plano citizens because it's created predictability that it meets the community's expectations, it is what Plano wants, and yet at the same time allows flexibility for property owners to continue to invest in their property and maintain Plano as the great place that people know and love. Last year, we celebrated the beginning of a long-awaited redevelopment project, Collin Creek. This project will ignite a dormant and well-known property, and it's one of the most complex projects in the state of Texas. Bringing this project to life required significant partnerships between the city's special projects and finance departments and our development partner. When complete, Collin Creek will bring new housing, retail and office space to Plano's Southern Corridor. This is definitely a gateway to Plano. Here we are at the corner of 75 and George Bush, um, and it is a really important corner for the city. It really does sort of kick off the 75 corridor through East Plano. And what we really see is this is a catalyst to redevelop the entire corridor. Some of that is already happening with the Legacy Central in the north, at 75 at the north end of Plano, and working our way down to the middle. So we really think of it as a real catalyst to reimagine the whole quarter of 75. The project itself is a whole new urban village, if you will. It is a, uh, a project that includes single family, multifamily, senior living, independent living, retail, office, hotel, all of the uses all in these 99 acres. And the city was really involved in the, both the design process and the financing of it. And it's really very exciting because it really envisions, reimagines the space behind me. Moreover, a lot of cities across America have these malls that are dying or dead in them. And Plano was one of the few who could successfully get it out of the ground and redevelop. The developer who bought the properties had to go in and, and buy uh, seven different pieces of property from Sears, from Macy's, from J.C. Penney's, from the mall itself. And so it wasn't just like a green field where you pay just a basic price. This was very involved and it cost a lot of money just to acquire all of it. And we're very lucky here in Plano that we had a developer with the wherewithal to do just that and acquired all 99 acres. We've seen tremendous interest in Plano's Opportunity Zone. Guided by the Oak Point Special Use Plan, Redevelopment is already underway at the Plano Market Square Mall. As well, the Legacy Business Park continues to see interest and strategic development as collectively we navigate the journey to a new normal in a post-COVID marketplace. We are proud to be the job creation engine in our region and don't take our business-friendly reputation for granted. We recognize the value our businesses bring to Plano and the North Texas region. In fact, our corporate community includes some of the most renowned companies in the world. We continue to look for the right investment opportunities. I'm pleased to announce that in 2021, 2,035 new jobs came to Plano through our economic development efforts. Our corporate community is key to our success as a city 
and why we're able to keep our tax rate low for our residents. Accordingly, we are committed to ensuring our businesses continue to have the amenities needed to thrive. One of those amenities is Plano's talent pool. We appreciate our education partners who continue to produce robust talent. From Plano ISD's 96% graduation rate to workforce ready training through Collin College and Paul Quinn College, the talent living in Plano is superior. We're also focused on increasing connections between talent and opportunity. 2021 was the eighth year for the Plano Mayor's Summer Internship Program. Working in partnership with our business community and Plano ISD, over the past eight years, we have placed more than 600 rising juniors in internships throughout the city. I've heard from many corporate leaders that Plano High School students are talented enough to compete for full-time employment opportunities. From my experience in PISD over the years, I have to say this is not a surprise. We also worked closely with DART in 2021 in the redesign of the bus network. Beginning this year, DART Zoom provides greater frequency, longer service hours, and improved access to destinations. This is a significant benefit to our entire community, providing a safe and easy access to our employment, education, and entertainment areas. One learning lesson from the past two years has been the importance of our medical community. Plano is fortunate to have a robust medical system. Our residents have access to some of the finest healthcare services in the country, encompassing state-of-the-art technology and leading healthcare professionals. Along with area hospitals offering a full spectrum of specialized care, Plano is home to one of the largest pediatric healthcare providers North Texas's only freestanding heart and vascular health hospital and a leading back institute. Plano has earned a national reputation for excellent life-saving capabilities thanks to the partnership between our medical community and our Plano Fire Rescue Team. This partnership was even more critical throughout the COVID pandemic. The first thing that really responded when COVID arrived in Plano was the local government yep. because we're the most nimble and we're the fastest to respond. And we were able to really support the needs of the community, to your point, not just in emergency medical services or fire suppression, but really the across the board needs that, that we had during COVID. One of the things that Plano Fire Rescue is most proud of is our community paramedic program was already in place and ready to go in response to COVID. And that's largely through partnerships with our community hospitals that we're able to have that program. We already had those people in place to go and do testing in 2020, vaccines in 2021. And if it wasn't for those community partnerships with the hospitals that support that program, we wouldn't have been able to respond as efficiently as we did. I think we did a great job of, of keeping our folks safe while we were out there seeing our citizens. And that really helped us keep providing service. We didn't have much illness within the department and that allowed us to keep functioning at a really high level. We got into independent living, assisted living, and nursing homes. We tested folks, we vaccinated folks, and we really mitigated the level of illness in the city so that hospitals could continue to do surgery. We did some work with the uh, Emergency Medical Task Force, mm -hmm. um, which is the regionally uh, where we did, we tested thousands and thousands of uh, citizens and assisted living, uh, long-term care facilities uh, all over our region. There was a period of time where things really shut down for a while, particularly that spring of 2020. And everybody in the U.S. was trying to figure out the right way to approach things. The city can't shut down. And so beyond public service, we had to look and say park and rec, you know, wastewater, um, environmental services. How do we keep these folks safe? We are so blessed. We have four or five different hospital systems in this city. Everybody does things a, a little differently. And we at the fire department, I think, coordinated between everybody about how we were going to respond to this. One of the uh, things that Plano Fire Rescue did that the, the city does so well as a whole is leverage our partnerships in the yeah. community, both public and private. Yep. And so if those relationships don't exist before a crisis arrives, it's too late to develop them. But the city of Plano, the local government, Plano Fire Rescue does such a good job of maintaining relationships and partnerships that when COVID arrived, we were already ready to go and we could immediately begin collaborating with those partners. The emotion at the community vaccine site is something I'll never forget in my career. 
you have people who have come out of their house for the first time in a year and people that are crying as they have the opportunity to get vaccinated and, and kind of get through some of the fear of being able to come out. The lines, particularly the first couple of weeks, um, and, and the tears and, and the families coming out all at once. One of the first days that the vaccine clinic was running, mm -hmm. there were cars around, the, uh, you know, all out onto the street. It was four or five hours wait. And they called and said, we're gonna bring portable lights out here and we're gonna stay into the evening. And our medics that were out there had signed up for an eight hour shift. And so mm -hmm. I called them and I said, they're gonna stay longer. Mm -hmm. Let me know who can stay and let me know who needs to be relieved and I'll get some more people out there. It may be 12, 13, 14 hours. And they called back about one minute later and said, hey, this is really important, we're all, we're all gonna stay. And that really emphasized to me how important this was on a much larger scale than just what Plano Fire Rescue was doing or just what that particular vaccine clinic was doing. This was, this was much bigger than us. Yep. We got out to the most vulnerable population, you know, with our community paramedics, and we took it to the people and we got the first responders as soon as it was available. That's what I'll recall from this entire thing is, you know, we, we tried to get up front to get the resources to get it to everybody in Plano to keep Plano moving. And it was hard, but Plano kept moving through this last two years. As Deputy Mayor Pro Tem 2 mentioned earlier, Plano continues to be recognized as one of the safest cities in America. Under the leadership of Chief Ed Drain, through partnership with our community, our police department ensures we consistently have one of the lowest crime rates in Texas for cities our size. In addition to this, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the wonderful amenities Plano offers our residents. I could keep you here for another hour listing everything that Plano has to offer, including 85 parks, 98 miles of trails, five recreation centers and nine public pools. We've been a Tree City USA for 32 years and 78% of our residents live within a 10 minute walk of a park. We're also home to the incredible Plano Public Library. As one library with five locations, they are much more than books. Offering adult learning, skills for business success, financial literacy, early learning, and much, much more. It's no wonder our public library received the National Library of the Future Award in 2021. These amenities are ours to enjoy thanks in no small measure to those who came before us. Their visionary mindset in land planning, placing parks along schools and library sites throughout the city have impacted generations. I like to think of the relationship between Parks and Recreation and the libraries as a team because uh, if someone has interest in a particular program, they go to libraries, they kind of get a feel, a taste of what it is, and if they want to continue that experience over the course of time, they can turn to Parks and Recreation. But what COVID really did, as you mentioned, it kind of pushed us together tighter so that we had to really work together to collaborate on those programs. We quickly shifted. In fact, our staff just jumped right together and created online virtual story times. That was our first kind of foray after a week of being closed. And then they quickly went and looked at all the other programs that we offered, including the ones that we work on with you all and other city departments, and they just put it all virtual. And we saw a really great response from our youngest early literacy um, people to our oldest senior population. It really hit a sweet spot, particularly for the seniors who were at home and kind of felt a little isolated. You know, that brings up a good point. I think that we work together with other city departments to really reach out to the seniors. That was a, a very vulnerable population. We didn't want them to feel disconnected. And so seniors had the opportunity to sign up and have somebody from the city, which ended up being library staff. And we were delighted to do it. Um, we reached out to them every two weeks, the same staff member for a year and a half, worked with the same senior and they built this beautiful relationship. Um, at the beginning of COVID, it tended to be more focused on where can I find resources? Can you help me? Can you get me connected to things? But as the year and a half went on, this relationship developed that still exists to this day for some of them. Mm -hmm. They'll still come in and visit their person at the library. We felt really strongly in the city of Plano that if people are going to be locked down in their homes, not being able to go to work, not being able to go out and socialize, they needed a place where they could go. And one of the main components that made that possible was transitioning how some of our employees worked, pulling them out of the libraries, pulling them out of the recreation centers that were closed 
and redeploying them out into our parks and on our trails. Part of why people choose to work in libraries is they love helping people. And so when we had the building, we weren't able to have people in the building. It really meant a lot that we could go out of the building, join you all on the trails, serve in some capacity. We wore our library t-shirts, we had hats on, and it's what we do every day in the library. We welcome people, we talk to them about what the um, constraints are, maybe to encourage them to social distance. We just really enjoyed that process of being outside, working with our partners, supporting you all meant a lot, but also just being out in the community and helping residents was just really meaningful. And what's better on a park trail than an audiobook? It was a win-win because it helped our employees feel like they had a real responsibility during the lockdown, and they could see with their own eyes how our parks and trails were being used almost beyond capacity. There's also the emotional benefit that you get from being outside, uh, and getting fresh air, and engaging in something that you like that's recreational. And I wholeheartedly agree. Um, having been out here just for a half an hour today, I feel better already. <laughs> um, but we always say that we're more than books. Our, our hashtag is more than books because while we appreciate that people use us for our reading materials, and that was really demonstrated to us throughout COVID, people checked out e-materials online when they couldn't come into the building. They used our databases, they streamed videos, they used all the resources we offer digitally, and it really helped them kind of escape maybe that day being inside all day and we help children by learning and growing and offering virtual classes and what they ended up sharing back with us whether it was through stories notes cards some people just stood up against windows at times and were like we love you <laughs> i mean we are a part of people's lives we welcome people in daily we are there to be that connection to another city resource or just be that listening ear but both of us i think have exceptional staff that do amazing work each and every day like delivering service for our community you got that right Earlier, I mentioned our partnerships are key to our successes. There's perhaps no greater example of the importance of partnerships than looking back to our community's response to the February winter storm. At the peak, approximately 50,000 homes in Plano had power interruptions and many were prolonged. Working with our faith community and nonprofits, we provided shelter for nearly 300 residents. With no electricity, frozen pipes quickly became an issue. Plano Fire Rescue fielded 3,500 calls for service throughout the week, and Plano Police Department covered 2,200 calls for service. Staff from multiple departments mobilized to help residents with emergency water shutoffs. The city set up water distribution sites for residents in need. That's not to mention the work behind the scenes to keep residents informed signals working, and streets and intersections safe. City staff rose to the occasion and took care of our citizens, many leaving their families behind in homes without power or water to make sure our Plano community was taken care of. We would not have been successful in meeting the vast needs caused by this once-in-a-lifetime storm without the work of our dedicated staff and our community partners. We are a strong and healthy community. My fellow council members and I are united in our shared vision that Plano is a global economic leader bonded by a shared sense of community where residents experience unparalleled quality of life. We are collectively committed to excellence. I can assure you our expectations have never been higher as we move forward as a community of excellence. It's an honor to serve as your mayor and to be able to report to you today that the state of our city remains excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Munns, for your service to our community this first year as mayor. On behalf of the entire Plano Chamber of Commerce, we look forward to working hard in 2022 to keep our community at the forefront of success and prosperity. As we close, I'd like to once again thank Toyota Motor North America for sponsoring today's event and making this special presentation a reality. We continue to bring you impactful programming thanks to the continued partnership of our great partners like Toyota. I would also like to thank our 2021 Board of Directors for their hard work and service during another challenging year, and look forward to the year ahead with our newly installed 2022 Board. I know great things are in our future as we work through the new strategic recovery plan for our members and our community. 
to Steve McSwain, it was such a great experience working with you this past year, and I have learned so much from you. Thank you. To our chamber members for making all of this possible and the dedicated chamber staff who work tirelessly to support our business community through constant change. I hope you will join us for our upcoming candidate forums later this month and the kickoff to our Women's Division 50th anniversary in March. We have so much to be proud of and thankful for in Plano. We are adjourned. <laughs>